Welcome to energy and flexibility modeling exercise. In this exercise, we will discuss and then implement a simplified method of translating energy efficiency policy into numbers, then plug in these numbers to associated parameters. First of all, let's have a quick look on what is energy efficiency policy. Did you know that the concept of energy efficiency policy is not a new one? In fact, the first recorded instance of uh, energy efficiency being promoted as a policy initiative can be traced back to the ancient Rome, where Emperor Nero issued a decree to limit the use of candles during the day in order to conserve oil. Since then, energy efficiency policies have come a long way. In the early 20th century, many countries began to adopt building codes that required the use of insulation, weather stripping, and other energy efficiency measures in new construction. Today, when energy efficiency policies are implemented at national, state, and local levels and cover a wide range of areas including transportation, buildings, industry, and agriculture. In short, we can say energy efficiency programs and policies aim to reduce appliance energy uses while ensuring consumer satisfaction. By focusing on the load or demand side, this initiative strives to maintain the same level of service while using less energy. But why do we need such policies? Another interesting fact about energy efficiency policy is that it is often a win-win situation for both consumers and the environment. By reducing the energy consumption, individuals and businesses can save money on their utility bills while also reducing their carbon footprints and helping to combat the climate change. At the same time, energy efficiency policies can create new jobs and stimulate economic growth in industries such as renewable energy and energy efficient technologies. In summary, energy efficiency policy has a long and rich history and continues to be a critical tool in our efforts to build a more sustainable and prosperous future. Let us continue to support and promote energy efficiency policies at all levels and work together to create a brighter and more sustainable world for generations to come. But how do we implement energy efficiency policies and what are the implementation matrices as well as proven roadmap for this? To promote the energy efficiency practices in country or state level, United Nations has published several reports. One of them is the best policy practices for energy efficiency promotion, and you can download it in the given link in the description. Another important report is the Urgent Action Policy on Energy Efficiency as a Toolkit, and that is done by IEA. So, you also can find suggestions and detailed guidelines on roadmaps to address the policy level implementations. The energy efficiency policy from an implementation perspective ideally could be taken as an all-out approach mostly associated with the demand side management. So, in our exercise today, we'll be focusing on the demand side management issues of energy efficiency policies. So wrapping this all together, we get a short background on what, why, and how do we fit in energy efficiency policy while modeling energy system. Now let's prepare an example policy of superficial country and gradually we will translate the qualitative policy salient features to quantitative parameters. Let's continue with our exercise. In this part, we are analyzing an example policy of a country named Alphabets. The government of this country are facing scarcity of primary energy resources and trying to reduce their reliance on imported energy supply. Let's pause the video and have a look on the policy.
By the end of this exercise, we will be able to do the following in osmosis. Model the energy efficiency policy implementation on a starter kit. Identifying and modifying the data parameters affected by the policy inclusions. Implementing technology-specific constraints to model real-world alike energy transitions. In our exercise, you can find that we have divided our demand in three major sectors that are industrial, commercial, and residential. To simplify the implementation of energy efficiency technologies in each of these sectors, moderate and high efficiency technologies were modeled in the demand side. You will get a visual idea from the reference energy illustration. As we know that modeling requires a reference energy system, and for our exercise, this is the reference energy system we have developed. Let's have a closer look on it. So let's have a closer look on the energy transfer stages before we deep dive into the parameters. In a reference energy system, there are stages of energy transfer, and in this reference energy system, we have marked them as commodities. And the commodities are being transferred from one form of energy to another with the help of technologies. And finally, being consumed by the end use technologies in the right part of the areas. Now, let's see which are the commodities and technologies will be changed or affected with our energy efficiency policy plugins. So, as you can see in the areas, let's talk about the technologies. So the technology is marked in blue, and as you can see in the figure, that are the technologies we have plugged in numbers. That are uh, two types of technology, each of the main demand sectors. So good and deep efficiency for industry sectors, good and deep efficiency for the residential sectors, and good and deep efficiency for the commercial sectors. So these are marked in the reference energy system. Later, you can see the electricity after distribution. So what the, the transfer of energy at the very last stage will be affected. So that will be the ELC003 in our reference energy system. And last of all, the end use commodities, which are marked in red, as you can spot on the areas, will be affected, shortly named as these three items. Now let's plug in the numbers in our actual click send interface. The first parameter we'll be working with is the input activity ratio. And the input activity ratio is a function of region, technology, fuel or commodities, mode of operations, and years. So in this exercise, you have to check the connectivity of that commodity and technology relationship. And particularly, you have to plug in these numbers. You have to check the number, whether it is plugged in, in your model or not. Let's have a closer look in a in the video exercise in the video you can see in the parameter sheet we will start the filtering so in the filter we will try input activity ratio so now the input activity ratio is here we will plug in the particular technologies and associated commodities or fuels. So let's do this. As you can see, for the industrial sectors, we just checked everything is 
okay here, the one is given, your model might not have this, so please check it and copy paste the values in full of the time horizon. So we are just adding these filters and making sure that everything is given in the model. The next core parameter we will be working with is the output activity ratio. Similarly, is the function of region, technology, fuel, mode of operation, and year. And it is one of the major parameters that we will be plugging numbers. And this is the parameter for which we will be defining the efficiency of each of the parameters. So let's pause the video and have a closer look on this passage so that you have idea how we have simplified the efficiency levels to the output activity ratio. Although it's an oversimplification, but you might be able to capture the essence of efficiency parameters in industrial level with this exercise. Now let's have a closer look with our video exercise. In the video, we will just filter the parameter output activity ratio, then the associated technologies, then associated fuel, As you can see, we just plugged in the numbers as we have seen in the previous illustration. It's the same number, so you just copy paste it here. And you have to do the same thing for each of the sector and each of the fuel corresponding. So you just have to plug in the numbers and you can play with the numbers, whatever you want to do. Our last parameter is capacity to activity unit. We just have to check that whatever technology we will be working with, the number is 31.536. There's a back calculation behind it. You can find the details in the model description of osmosis. So you just have to plug in these numbers or check the numbers whether it is given to your model or not. We will have the clear idea on our video exercise. We are just filtering the capacity to activity ratio. And filtering the associated technologies. As you know, this is a time independent value so this will have only one columns for it there will be no values for a year wise because this is not a function of year
Now let's have an idea about how the user clicks an interface and extract the data to run the model. So we are using one of the interfaces named ClickSand for our data processing. So what we have done in the Excel interface of ClickSand, we are preparing the input data file. Then we will use the model script to run our model. To run the model, we will simply use the Osmosis Cloud. The address is given in the picture as you can see. You just have to open an account and run the model there. From the Osmosis Cloud, you will have the reference energy system, the result file, and the charts. We will have a better look how the Osmosis Cloud looks like. As you can see, the Osmosis Cloud interface will look alike. You just have to import the model and the data file. In the, as an output, you will get the reference of the system, the results, the result CSV files, and the charts. Let's have a look on the charts. It may take some time to take a load. So this is the chart interface that could be extracted from Osmosis Cloud. So these are the results we can use. Or we can download the data file from the Osmosis Cloud and use the conversion tool to extract the results. Now, let's have a look on the sampled results and how to interpret the results. Although the total energy consumption has a significant decline in energy efficiency case, especially in commercial and industrial sector, as you can see in the illustrations, but Due to the rise in electric vehicle users, the consumption in transport is higher than that of reference case, as you can see. So check the transport section consumption during the 2001 to 2030. You can compare the results. Also, pause the video to check the remarks on this output so that it may help you to better understand the results. In this illustration, you can see a comparison of power and generation capacity with energy efficiency case and the reference case. As the total energy consumption in energy efficiency case has gone lower, as you can see from the labels in the marked region, so as the capacity requirement has declined than that of capacity reference case. The difference is significant starting from the year 2030. Last but not the least, another significant change we can see in the capital investment comparison. Investment for higher efficiency are usually costlier than lower efficiency technologies, but there are other factors at play as well. For instance, we may have to install less generation capacity, which may save some capital investment. Sometimes, overall cost reduction is therefore difficult to guarantee. All the results can assist in understanding the outcome. So this is one of the sample cases where you have learned about the energy efficiency parameter fitting into your model. Although this is a small part of the big scenario example, you can have an idea how to plug in the energy efficiency numbers into your model. Hope the exercise have helped you and good luck with your energy modeling endeavors.